Hello, hello guys. Hello. We're going to pop on a minute early. Hello. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Sundays in the Studio with me, <laughs> with Sandy. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. Um, and <laughs> the first day of a new week, and I have a long list of to do's. How about y'all? So, first off, Thank you for being here and let me know where you're joining from, where you um, are and what your temp is. I always love to hear what the temp is other places. Um, so right now here in middle Georgia, 76 and an absolutely gorgeous sunny day. <laughs> so hello Yvonne and happy Monday to you down under. Hello Dee. Hi Linda. Chili uh, Meaford. Is it Meaford? I know you told me, Karen. I should know. Ontario. Hello, Cindy and Chris and Marianne and Lori. So many of my members on. Love to see you guys. Hello. Hello, Lois Ann and Carol. Oh, my goodness. And over on YouTube, that was just on Facebook. Um, Lori C. I'm going to presume that's Coates. Um, and Monty and Kay and Brenda and Linda. Hello, guys. All righty. Oh, that doesn't show your name on YouTube. I don't know if, um, anyway, hello, Wendy Warner. About 35. Wow. Love your shirt. So spring-like, right, Cindy? That's why I picked it out of my closet. <laughs> um, but I have on sweatpants. <laughs> and then I also, um, oh, 67 in North Georgia, 87 in Texas. Ready for winter? I'm ready for spring and a really nice summer. <laughs> so later on this week, winter is going to return, Karen. Oh my goodness. Um, let me see if I can pronounce that. Mississauga? Mississauga? Mississauga. You have to let me know how close I am, Deb. Um, just, in, just in from walking the dog. Oh, wonderful. Well, 69 degrees is nice to be able to get out and walk the dog, right? Hello, Sylvia. So good to see you on. I hope you're doing well, my friend. And Mona in Canada. Wow, Claddy, I'm 51. 52 in Illinois, 35. <laughs> I always thought it would be fun to be a weather girl. Um, but then again, probably not. So I'm going to reach and get my water real quick because I feel like I have a frog in my throat. Wow, 79 Louisiana, Deb. I mean, uh, Linda. Wow. <laughs> Which is so weird I just said Deb because Linda Safranco just commented my, I have two sisters. One's Deb, Debbie, and uh, Linda. So, hello. Anyway, 77. Hello, Keiko. Hello, Letitia. Yeah, California, you guys are getting pelted with a lot of snow, right? Wow. Hello, Charlene. All right, guys. Hi, Molly Ann. Drizzle, 53, Southern California. Hot in Brisbane. Won't cool until April or May. Yes, you guys have had some pretty hot temps down there, right, Yvonne? Hi, Lynn in Delaware. So the temps aren't that bad. Um, you don't have to know where you're, what you're doing. Just pretend. <laughs> Too funny. Is correct. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Karen, for letting me know. I always feel bad if I you know, mispronounce someone's name or spell someone's name wrong or mispronounce where they're from. But, you know, it's, the English language is kind of funny, right? Sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. So, hi, Margie and Santa Maria. Oh, goodness gracious. So, guys, it's so good. Lori, it's 70 in Murfreesboro. And, yes, good. And the reason I asked was because you were the first one on YouTube to comment. So, the thing is, uh, Lori Coates, you were the first on YouTube to comment. And then I'll show you in a second. Uh, Lola, you were the first on Facebook. If you message me the e-packet that is currently on my website, whatever e-packet that is currently on my website, not one that's coming, <laughs> but one that is on my website now, message me and let me know, and I will get that sent off to you. So Lola Serrano, which I believe you're in the Madrid area, right? Um, 
I could be mistaken. And then Lori Coates, message me and let me know what e-packet you would like on my website and I'll get that sent to you, okay? All righty. 70, going down to 47 tonight. Oh, wow. Um, and that's in Georgia as well. Hello, Debbie Matthews and uh, Lucy and Melina and Karen Wilson. So good to see you guys on. Um, hello, Carrie Lozana. Okay, so today I was going to do something and then it kind of changed. I have, um, we were away. I have a family member, my daddy that had a major surgery and is recovering well and doing very well. Um, but, you know, if you're the praying type, would appreciate any prayers that you have um, for him. And so I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about um, some mixed media things that I'm going to do. But then also, oh, something just popped up on my computer. You started to start a happy meal for the week. You started the start of Happy Meal. <laughs> oh, yes, D, I did, didn't I? And this week, I didn't get any Happy Mail, so kind of sad. But um, hopefully, I've sent out a bunch of Happy Mail, and I'll go over that as well. Um, but anyway, I wanted to do something today to kind of talk to you guys about um, if I'm in a rut and I can't figure out what it is I want to do, oftentimes, I will either base coat a surface or I will start a surface with gesso a couple different ways, and I'm going to show you both today. We're going to create a background, and I had not done anything on it until yesterday <laughs> um, because it finally spoke to me and told me what it wanted on it. So I know I've talked to you guys about that as well. So he's doing good. He's doing really well, and it is a rough major surgery. So um, thank you so much, Lucy. Um, Anyway, the other thing is um, chipboard. So I, I wanted to um, kind of touch on some questions, like some major questions that I've gotten over the last couple of months, and I haven't really had an opportunity to answer, and I thought this would be a great time to not only answer them, but then to show you some things to do. So um, make sure, oh my goodness, 85 sunny here in Southwest Florida. Oh, Norma, <laughs> that's my kind of weather. So thank you guys so much. He's doing well, and I greatly appreciate it. And I do believe in the power of prayer. So I appreciate you guys um, sending those up. Um, anyway, let's come over here real quick. Hello, Carol Manhart. Those grapes behind you are absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Alice. So those grapes I'm actually teaching this month in my membership group. Um, if you're not familiar with it, I don't like to go on and on, but right there, you can go to my website. You'll see the little link for membership, and um, and that's my website there. And um, But anyway, I do a quarterly Zoom class with my members. It's a free class, and that piece right there I painted with water-soluble oils, but we're going to paint it together as a um, my membership group with acrylics. So it's an opportunity for me to get to see them um, because usually it's me live in our group um, three to four times a month painting and creating all these fun things. This month is all about Georgia O'Keeffe and painting big, bold florals um, and designs. So anyway, so if you're in my membership group, that is our free Zoom class this month. Um, and oftentimes I don't do them anywhere else. So Anyway, check out my website, and you can see how much my membership group is, and let's see if I have that on there. <laughs> I do. There's my website address. Um, anyway, you can go there, see some of the information, how often we meet, and um, we'd love to have you. We are a fantastic, supportive group that cheers each other on, um, and let me just tell you, they always say I bless them. They bless me more than they know, so... Hello, Tara. Hello, Debbie. Yes, I love her florals too, Tara. Um, thank you, Molly Ann. I think it's worth every penny too. So anyway, especially if you do yearly, because then of course you save. <laughs> um, but we're going to talk about that today as well, um, doing backgrounds and kind of getting out of that creative rut and um, 
And I'm going to show you a couple in my art journal and why I would put them in my art journal versus doing it on a surface. So, um, <laughs> great question, Tara. Do you have a date for the Zoom, please? Yvonne, I do. It's in the membership group on the header. The top little header has all of our dates that we're meeting. Um, and the PDF will be loaded this week for you guys to know what colors and the line drawing. So, hello, Sharita. So, someone asked how my husband was faring. <laughs> so, um, if you first off, if this is the first time you're joining, welcome. I'm Sandy McTeer, and I try to do this a couple of times a month on Sundays. Sundays in the studio with me. Um, and I have some very busy Sundays in March, so we might have to move around some dates. Um, and the best part of the membership, if you can't be there for the live, you can go back and watch later. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah, and there's a hundred, there's probably close to 130 plus lessons in the group right now. Um, I have guest artists, Holly Hanley, um, Tracy Moreau, Deb Antonick, Marianne Androsi, uh, Kat Kerr, Marco Aguilar, Lana Lamb, uh, Kathy Hansen, um, and guest lessons that I've done with them that are recorded and in the group as well. So anyway, the Zoom is on your birthday. Yes, Lucy, I saw that. Okay, guys. So let's take care of some giveaways first um, and then giveaways for this week. But I wanted to go back to the comment about how my husband has fared the first week of retirement <laughs> and the first week of working with me. Um, I told him it probably won't take long before he's looking to find a job somewhere else. <laughs> um, no, he's been amazing. We've had such a busy week. Um, there are so many things there's so many things when you're running a business, a small business, but, and I hate to call it that, it's my business. Um, I'm busy with my work, with my designing, with my membership group, especially um, work I do with Deco Art, things I do with Dynasty Brush. There's so many kind of irons in the fire that some things kind of get pushed aside. Um, and most of it's organizational stuff. Now, let me just tell you, my husband is the master of organizing. Um, he really could be like that uh, Marie Kondo to clean your closet out and minimal um, or minimalist kind of look. Um, but then also the, um, what is the two, the two ladies that do the organizing like of closets and things like that. My husband is a whiz at doing all of that and um, not really being emotionally attached to things where I am. <laughs> um, I thought of him when I received my happy mail. Right, Tara? I have not relinquished control of happy mail to him yet. He keeps saying I need to start, and I've shown him a couple of things, but as you guys know, I love to throw in the extras, and, and then also, like I know, some of the things I've sent Tara before or other people. So home edit, Wendy Warner, thank you. So my husband is a whiz at the home editing, um, whereas I like antiques and collectibles, and I've always been a collector, and I have a lot of things everywhere. Um, so someone over on YouTube, someone dropped me a comment because it stopped about 10 minutes ago, and I want to make sure that I'm getting comments over there, all right? Um, show you right now. <laughs> Well, Lucy, hopefully today some of the things I'm going to share with you will kind of get you past that point. Um, hi, Debbie Gill. So, hello, Sue Potts. Um, anyway, so right now I'm not ready to relinquish the happy mail thing. Um, again, I, there are certain ways I pack the orders, things I like to throw on the orders, and I always love to draw on the outside of the orders with a little doodle or something. So I'm not ready to give that up just yet. But the other things that he has done for me has helped me um, just kind of get myself organized. <laughs> Paperwork. Now, the thing with him, I have to tell you guys, and I'm going to come in close because he's in the other room. He's a very fast worker. So if I give him something to do, and the next morning he wakes up at 7 o'clock, 
and he's on the computer at 7.30 right into it and gets it done, whereas I think it's going to take him maybe two or three days. He's done in two or three hours, and I need to find things that's going to keep him occupied more <laughs> for longer hours um, just so that I can get things done. So we're, we're getting there. It was a great week, though, I have to say. I probably aggravated him more than he aggravated me. Um, but I'm looking forward to this new normal of having him home. We still walk into to a room and we both kind of flinch. Um, and our thing has always been like, you're not living right. <laughs> um, because it's still unexpected for him to be around the corner. So anyway, love your envelope. Love my envelope, Dudeen. Thank you, Virginia. Um, you've been in a rut, hard to get motivated. Oh, Jeanette. Well, hopefully today I will kind of give you some ideas to get out of that rut. All right. Um, you got your doodle. Wonderful. I need shelves and cabinets costly. They can be Lucy. Yes, they can. Um, I have to reorganize the kitchen. On that note, let me just say, go to thrift shops, go to the Goodwill, look for things, look for, um, dressers that even do I rent them out? <laughs> My friends for as long as I've been married have asked me that. Um, he, I could go on and gush about him the whole time. He's just, he's the most considerate, thoughtful, wonderful, organized, um, person I know. Anyway, um, but look for things at thrift shops and the Goodwill, um, or Salvation Army, um, Habitat for Humanities shops and look for dressers and shelving and things like that, because guess what? We have access to paint and we know how to use it. So you can revamp something. If nothing else, get a can of spray paint and spray it so that you've got something that you can organize things in. Um, I'm pretty much wall-to-wall -wall furniture. Having lived in England for six years, um, my mother being um, an antiqueaholic and a collector, which was passed on to me, um, and I love it, but um, I am, yeah. So once you're wall to wall, you kind of have to go up <laughs> and that's where the shelves come in. So hi, Janet, have him reorganize the kitchen cabinets. Well, Molly Ann, he already does that. <laughs> and um, let me just say, I'm also a, a collector of dishes and um, I'm just gonna look over here on, okay, good. We've got YouTube chat coming up, wonderful. You're still here. That's great to hear. <laughs> thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. My mom and I both, thank you, Linda Safranco. I appreciate that. And I'm so happy that your mom is watching in Florida. Um, I would go to the grocery store and bring groceries home and put them away. And then he'd go behind me and organize everything. And so like all the green beans, all the peas, all the lima beans, whatever, in order, and when you go to the store, you can't just put them in the cabinet. You got to put the things that were in the cabinet first and then put the new things behind. Um, same thing with the freezer would always be organized. And it, at first it kind of like threw me and I'm like, I'm not being a great person or a great wife. And then I finally just thought, if that knocks your socks off, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, and he has never once complained. Um, and it'll be 33 years this September. So your hair looks great today. Oh, thank you, Debbie. I left the rollers in too long, so I was a little worried. <laughs> um, roll out shelves in the bathroom, my latest honeydew project. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, I've had a lot of um, honeydew projects. And uh, anyway, so it's been great. And it was a wonderful week, but about 4 or 4.30, we were both exhausted because I think our brains were so tired of organizing. Um, anyway, excess furniture, et cetera. We have the contents of two sets of parents' homes, three-car garage that can only tightly fit one small sports car. Well, I'm happy to say that my garage is pretty organized, and I could get both cars in mine if I needed to. Um, actually, I can't right now because we bring all of the plants from inside. Um, we bring them into the garage so that they can get the sun, um, from the windows, but also not freeze. So anyway, it's 419. I'm going to give one more minute, which is probably going to happen in a second. Um, and we're going to get started with our giveaways and stuff. Okay. So 
all labels were going <laughs> in the same direction. <laughs> oh, it's too funny, Lucy. I know, I know. And sometimes, you know, then you fix it and then it goes right back and it can kind of cause a little tension. I, I kind of got over that years ago because that, that's just who he is and I greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it, but it's not who I am. Um, and so we have a good understanding there. Anyway, okay, it's 420. Let me move some things out of the way. And I also wanted to real quick talk about, um, because it the registration opens on the 7th, if I'm not mistaken, which is Tuesday. Um, so the 7th, I believe, if you go to okcpaintingpalooza.com, it's at the very bottom there, um, is their website. And the registration opens for projects. Um, and my two projects, I'll pop those up, but then I'll show you. I'm teaching uh, Happy Fall with a scarecrow that is a kind of a revamped design that I did with my membership group. And then some Ukrainian folk art. Um, and on that note, any stars that you um, donate in Facebook in the little chat window, if there's a star and you decide to donate or money on YouTube, that money goes to World Central Kitchen. Um, and so I greatly appreciate you guys donating and giving to that so that we can pass that on and donate it to a worthy cause. Feeding, uh, especially right now, people in um, earthquake torn Turkey and Syria, but then also in Ukraine. So anyway, these are my projects that I'm teaching in... Uh, that was not a nice transition, was it? <laughs> Great cause. I hope you guys will consider donating. Okay. Okay, see. So I'm teaching my happy fall guy. And this class comes with um, one, two stencils and some extra goodies as well. And then my Ukrainian folk art. Okay. Um, both acrylics and I can't wait for... Okay, see. So, all right, let's come down here and I'm going to move this out of the way so we can take care of giveaways. Um, where did you get the arched board for your welcome sign? That is, uh, Karen Wilson, that is on cdwood.com. I'm going to pop this up, but this is not the item number for that. All right, if you put in arched plaque, it should come up, cdwood.com. Um, but anyway, we had some giveaways last week. And the first one was for my laser cut dragonflies, which I am loving. Um, and there are three, there's five different sizes. Um, I showed you guys last week how you could cut off the little loop that comes on that, because it was a um, an SVG file that I um, that I had access to. And then remember, I shared with you guys that you can paint them, attach them to uh, surfaces, which I did to these dahlias. And I just cut off the loop, which was super easy to do. Okay. So, and then a little, I have too, too much paint, said no one ever. I mean, right? <laughs> paint and brushes. That's what I need to do next. So the winner of that is Deborah. De Ritter Wallman, 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 message me if you go to my website and hit the contact us button um, and send me your mailing address. I will get that shipped out to you. Okay. Now, this was an easel that Pinecraft did for uh, Elizabeth Stoll and I last year um, when we taught the special event at o um, OKC. Do you sell all the sizes? I only sell right now, D. I only sell the larger size, but I will get the other ones on there. I was waiting to see how they did, and oh my goodness gracious, they've done super well. So I will add more um, to my website very soon. Okay, so pinecraftinc.com. Anyway, so Doug and the great people at Pinecraft, he created this easel for us. So this easel and something else I cut on my Glowforge um, was this cute little hot cocoa bar. It has so many little pieces that I wrapped it in saran wrap. And the winner of that is 
<laughs> D. D gets. I have your info and I will send it to you tomorrow. So let's move that out of the way. And that I put there. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails about this that I created for my... Um, you did not miss the dahlias. I've not done that yet, Debbie, but I will probably soon. Um, I did it as a seminar selection piece, but this um, stencil that I did the plaid background with, that should be in very soon. You guys sold me out. Thank you so much. So hopefully soon it will be back in. Okay giveaways for this week and I think they're pretty spectacular and all you have to do is let's pop that up like comment and share on YouTube there's a little button that you can click and it gives you a shareable link and you can share that on whatever um, but we have some giveaways and I'm going to start with this one um, this is a set of my chipboard pieces so let's get rid of that this is an eight piece honeycomb and bee set. So it comes with three of the little bees, three of the big bees, and the smaller honeycomb and the larger honeycomb. Okay, um, so one of each of those and then three of the big bees, three of the small bees. And then I took them out of the package just to show you. And then my three-piece mini stencil set. So I have a dragonfly, a butterfly, and it comes with that. Because you could lay this down and spritz around it, paint around it. Um, so I just included everything that was cut out. And then the bee stencil. And then all these little pieces and parts. In fact, my husband was packaging these up today because those are selling super well. You guys are um, have been very, very receptive to those, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, this is a 12-piece chipboard butterfly set, and it has in it, I will show you, um, six of the big butterfly and six of the small butterflies. Now, I got a lot of questions about chipboard, so we're going to cover that today. Um, doing a couple mixed media things. All right, so one winner for those three sets. And then I have another. Um, I got a question, I want to say it was from Carol, on YouTube last week, and she said that I was using water at the time, and she wanted to know why I wasn't using the fast drying glazing medium. So I use it. But oftentimes, when I'm just kind of going, I, I just do water. So, um, this is the next giveaway. And it's a fantastic product. Fast drying glaze medium and clear glaze medium, Josanya. And then something I'm going to show you guys um, today. The Did I bring it over? I did. Okay, good. So, the White Frost Metallic Luster. Absolutely love, love, love. You can mix this with regular paint and make it a metallic. It does make it... Um, lighter because this is a white base, but it has such a beautiful shimmer. You can buff it on or rub it on to furniture, um, raised bits, and then buff it to a sheen, kind of like on that frame that's on the packaging. Such a fantastic product. Okay, so that's for someone else. And then I have, oops, I lost my footing. I have something exciting that my friend Laura Haberstraw had donated last year at OKC, and it's a brush roll-up. So this brush roll-up, how cool is this? And again, all you have to do is like, comment, share. I love, love, love this fabric, which I want to tell you guys, Tim Holtz just came out with a new uh, collage paper that's very similar to this. And I, it is coming. I will have it very soon. Um, and I cannot wait to create with it. So anyway, so another winner for this brush roll up. Again, all you have to do is like, comment, and share. And when you share, guys, make sure you're sharing to a page or to a group that allows it. All right? And I want you to get in trouble. <laughs> so anyhow, isn't that awesome? Thank you so much, Laura, for donating that for me to give away. Okay, 
Let's talk real quick too about, I was talking about Happy Mail. In all my orders, I always try to send out a little wood something. And so I've been doing these on my laser, on my uh, Glowforge. And um, I know, isn't that fabric amazing, guys? I love, love, love. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so I have been doing a little design or decorative thing. You can barely even feel that that's been etched onto the wood. These are from the Dollar Tree. And I just thought I would kind of bling them up a little. So how cute is that one? Anyway, so these are going out with orders. And then a new little mini stencil that I did because I'm waiting for my order from Tracy. <laughs> um, for the M square, we usually do a little mini. Um, but I did this little floral mini. So that goes out together with a couple little extra things. And um, those go in every single order that I send out. And I always try and switch it up with whatever the Dollar Tree has. This time it's Easter, spring, so that carrot, bunny rabbit, and chickadee. All righty. Um, so I'm not going to show you the piece that I, that in, I finished, <laughs> um, because what I did and what I had planned to do for today, um, is exactly what I'm going to do and show you to get started with like a background and a mixed media background. And I know we did backgrounds a couple of weeks ago, um, or it might even been a couple months ago, and then I painted on them. So like my cherry blossoms. One of the lives I did was for the bokeh background, and then I put a design on it. So I'm going to show you how I did this background. I don't want to show you the finished piece just yet. It will be a live lesson, um, hopefully this month, um, but I want you to see where it goes. But it spoke to me yesterday, and so I decided to paint a design on it, okay? Now, remember I said if you have, um, let me move that back there. If you're having some um, creative ruts and you don't know where to get started or what to do, let me show you first and then I will show you my examples because I want this to dry. I'm going to use gesso. This is my favorite gesso. It's the DecoArt Media gesso. And... I'm going to put that on with a three-quarter flat brush. All right, so this is my Dynasty Flat Wash. Love these. Love the acrylic handle. And we're going to put out, best if you take it out of the jar and stick it onto your palette paper. Um, and I shared with you guys last week my favorite palette paper, right, is that Jack Richardson gray. You can see colors much better on a gray palette versus a white palette. Um, and you can get that on Dick Blick or Amazon. I get mine on Amazon, but you can also get it at the box stores, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Okay. So I'm going to put that there. And sorry, my sister was just calling me. <laughs> um, and I'm going to get my brush wet. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get my brush wet and then come over here. Now, what I did do to this was I already sealed it. And I sealed it with, let me grab it. I sealed it with DecoArt's multi-purpose sealer. The reason being, this is an MDF. I don't want that grain and pressed bits that have all been, you know, pressed to make this MDF board to come up. Most likely some of it will still come up, but if you seal it first, um, it will minimize that, all right? So this has already been sealed, and then I'm going to take that gesso with my three-quarter flat brush, and I'm going to slip slap. So I'm slip slapping, slip slapping, say that fast ten times. Um, because I want some texture in the background, but I don't want a lot of raised texture. So what I'm going to end up with is that texture from the brush stroke with a little bit of that gesso. Okay. And it's not super obvious on my finished piece. I'll show you um, on an angle when I show you that at the end, um, how you can see a little bit of this texture in the background. Okay, so I want the brush strokes to be there. So slip slap, 
plan, just kind of getting that product on there. And then I'm gonna move it to the side, okay? So look at all that fun texture. Um, again, not real thick, but again, it's going to help with our background. So I will put this to the side and I'm going to wipe this up. Do you sand before you seal? I did not, I, I do not Lucy on MDF, but sometimes on wood pieces, yes, I will sand. But I'm also gonna sand this and I'll show you um, how I did that, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and set it for a second and show you a couple things. So like I mentioned, if I'm in a rut, if I, um, and if I don't paint for several days, I usually get in a rut, let me just say. Um, but one thing I will do is I will just start painting some surfaces, okay? So I, I have something in my mind that I wanna do. This is a Sheila Landry surface. Um, and I just painted it gray and nothing really has spoken to me. What I kinda had in mind didn't pan out. <laughs> so I just left it, but again, I was productive, I got it base coated, and it's ready and waiting for something, right? Same thing. Tracy had sent me a couple of these um, surfaces, and I, so I'll show you that. So I did gesso with a palette knife, and I'm gonna show you that. Um, but then I did the other side as well, and I started just to let colors drip and move, and um, I have an idea for this. I just need to get it out of my head. <laughs> um, okay, another thing. Um, again, these um, kind of cattle tags, the the gesso and the texture. And so again, I just needed to get out of this rut and decided I'm just going to put gesso on something and go. Um, and I started putting some colors. There's some metallic luster in there, that white metallic luster that I um, did while it was wet and splattered it. So again, this is prepped and ready for something. Um, and then again, I, I had done my bunny rabbit and I had painted this gray and I completely forgot. I was looking through my stash and I found it, but this is where that bunny piece came from, okay? So base coat a piece, play around with some gesso, play around with some paint just to see what you get. However, these can be pricey and expensive, and you don't want to ruin them, mess them up, have to sand them off. So my favorite place to create in when I am doing my, um, my backgrounds and kind of getting out of my rut is in my art journal. So last year, I believe it was, I was playing around with some ideas with um, lessons for my group and I wanted to do backgrounds. So look at that metallic copper and then that flat matte Bahama blue with white gesso, um, just to give it a little bit of a uh, yummy patinaed uh, background. Then I played around with some more drips and then wood grain, which we did in my group. Um, but oftentimes, I will just get my journal because it's paper and if I mess up, then it's okay. I can gesso over that. Um, and this is the In and Out Grumbacher um, art journal. I carry it on my website. I only carry one size, seven by 10. Um, but this I love so much as a background. I haven't done anything on it yet. Um, let's see if I can turn it so you can see that metallic luster that I put in there. Um, anyway, so play around with backgrounds, play around in an art journal so that if you mess it up, you're not messing up a $5, $10 piece of wood. Um, it's paper at the end of the day, okay? Like this one, I did the gesso with a brayer to kind of get a different texture. I don't know what's gonna go on it yet. Um, but I wait until it speaks to me, or like in this case, I probably will never put anything on here because I think this is such a fantastic um, background and I love the colors that I could see just leaving that as is. So 
base coat, some wood grain raised. I sanded with a very fine grip, but it didn't manage to get a smooth surface. What grip should I use? Hmm, I'll have to look, Patrick. I'll show you what I use. Um, so I'll show you what I did. All right, let's get that piece back. And I already have the other side uh, base coated with one color. And this is not dry yet, so let me dry it with my heat tool. This is just gonna get that. You wanna move your heat tool around and notice how I'm holding the handle. Don't put your hand over the vent. You run the risk of it overheating and not working and catching on fire, okay? So make sure to hold the handle, run it back and forth, and get that very thin layer of gesso to dry. Yes, brown paper works great as well. Ooh, Robin, that would be really pretty, wouldn't it? White big flowers, like some anemones or white poppies. Um, I do have a piece, oh, it's over on the other side of my room, I can't get it, that I um, base coated and have a design. It's hollyhocks with bees, the little chipboard bees. Okay, that's dry. And I always just do the hand test. I kind of like to just... <laughs> feel my projects. So I want to read. Um, Chris Avola said, my journal has changed my painting life. It's paper, so free, nothing to dust. Genius. Sandy's brilliant. Oh, thank you. You paint more than you ever did. Well, that's the thing. Do it in your art journal and then take it somewhere else, which I do often. Um, you know, oftentimes we're afraid we're going to mess up these surfaces. And... Painting in an art journal just um, takes that away, right? And then Virginia said she bought several journals and decided to dedicate one to backgrounds only. That is awesome. And what you can do as well if you do that is either write on the back or at the bottom and um, write what colors you used as well so that when you go and you want to recreate it on something, you know what you actually used. Okay, so this is dry. And I went ahead and I'm going to base coat it with light buttermilk, okay? And I'm going to use a mix of, thank you, Molly Ann. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to use a mix of um, Americana and also the media line. You guys, if you're not using the media line, you are missing out. Um, and I am going to do a live soon on a comparison, um, okay, of Americana and the fluid acrylics. You can use these together. You can mix them together, and that's what I love about this line. But what I love most about this line is how vibrant it is and how transparent it is. Okay, so let's go to a bigger brush. This is a one inch um, black gold flat wash. Get it wet. That is a fantastic idea, Virginia, to do one with just backgrounds. Especially if you're trying to do your own thing. If you're if you're kind of like, I really just want to, you know, like paint something from scratch. That's my idea. Um, guess what, guys? Again, in the art journal, it's it's one of the best things to do is to play and see what happens. If you're like, oh, I wonder if that color will go with it. Guess what? In your art journal, you can. And if it doesn't work out, gesso is your best friend, and you'll be able to gesso over everything. All right, let's dry that. So that was just light buttermilk. Let's get that to dry. Oh, yes, Lori, magnolias are coming up. Magnolias are coming up. I've had one drawn out for a year, <laughs> maybe even more. No, I think a year. Um, and I need to finish painting it. That That's my um, self-diagnosed ADHD all over the place. Want to do it all, want to paint it all. And sometimes I get things drawn out or sketched out or even sometimes base coated. And then I have to get on to the next thing. Um, and so I've got a little pile of those. All right, let me see here. Alrighty. Yes, the honeycomb set is so stinking adorable. Um, 
I am going to do a little quick mixed media tag with them, but not today. Um, what I really loved about the last couple of weeks is doing the background, like for the bunny, and then coming back and doing the bunny. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you this background that I'm doing. I'm going to show you how to um, paint the butterfly chipboard because I, again, had so many emails and requests asking me, what do you do with the chipboard? How do you paint it? I'm going to show you today. All right. So let's um, do one more coat of light buttermilk. I always try and make sure my surface is not warm or hot after using that heat tool because it will grab that paint. So make sure that you um, let it cool down first. Okay. And this is the other thing, you know, like I told you, hello, Sandra Schmidt. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, like I told you guys on um, Facebook, I can go back and answer questions. On YouTube, I really can't because there's, there's no way to go back into the chat. So if I miss a question and you really want the answer to it, <laughs> um, message me. Again, you can go to my website and hit that contact button, and I will definitely get you. It's not that I'm ignoring any questions. It's just, again, I'm kind of a one-woman show here, and to look up constantly um, is kind of hard to get through the lesson if I'm doing that, so. Thank you for introducing me to Gesso. I pulled out my Gesso last night to take out something. I love Gesso, and if you guys are not using it, um, let me just tell you, I hope, and I want them to put it in a 16 ounce jar, like the Chalky Gesso, which I also love. Um, either an eight ounce jar or a 16 ounce jar or a 16, or an eight ounce bottle. I think would even be better because then you can just squeeze it out. You don't have to open the jar lid. To be honest, the eight ounce would be, this one to me would be ideal to put gesso in that. Okay, now, oops, hello, Sandy. I put that on and then I didn't realize it wasn't dry. Let's put this to the side, come back with our gesso, and let me get a paper towel. I'm just going to lay this down just to kind of minimize my um, mess on my gray silicone baking mat that I got on Amazon. Um, great, great little tool to have and to work on. Uh, rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer, awesome from the Dollar Tree, even packing tape will take up some things. Okay, so chipboard is basically cardboard. All right. Yes, an eight ounce bottle. I totally agree. Um, you need to borrow Renee from Tracy. I know, Kay, right? <laughs> I need to like, um, what is that? Bring him in virtually into my studio. Okay. So this is cardboard, chipboard, that when you add water to paper, we know what happens, right? So like even in my art journal, I will either gesso it or put matte medium first so that I can control how the product is gonna move um, and work. So on chipboard, same thing. You can either put matte medium on both sides or gesso, and I did gesso. So I'm gonna get out my, um, my gesso. Oop, just stuck my brush in there, which I have to admit I do all the time. Um, but if you don't use it as often as I do, you do run the risk of it mildewing. So that could be an issue. So I don't have any water in my brush. I'm just working that gesso into my brush and I'm going to brush it on. Okay. If you have um, like press and seal or low tack double stick tape, you can set those on there so that you're able to um, keep them from moving around. I typically will put them on a paper towel and, uh, and then just hold it somewhere. And then again, take away my fingernail mark. So dry brush is important. We don't want it too wet um, because I'm going to use some water 
and some moisture. And this will swell if you don't put something on it to um, act as a barrier. Again, either matte medium or gesso, or just base coat it with a color. Um, it can just be regular acrylic paint, but again, I, I um, want to stress, I would use a brush that is dry, no water in it, loaded up with paint. Okay, so let's dry those. And I do like to move them so they don't stick where I put that. Let's dry that. And to hold it down, if you've got some kind of like a needle tool um, or a stylus that can hold it in place. I agree, Karen. I'm not a big fan of the tubes. Um, the bottles are nice so that you can put some of the product back in. But again, if you're mixing things on your palette and you think there's water in it, not a great idea to put it back in the bottle because you run the risk of contaminating your other color. Okay. All right, so that's one layer. I'm going to do a second coat. And uh, let's get that. Okay. Could you use the DecoArt antiquing gel? You could, Brenda. Yeah, you know, and again, depending on what you want to put on it. Something that's going to seal it. You could even use that multi-purpose sealer. The reason I don't use this, it's a little too liquid, and I don't want to start breaking down the um, properties of the cardboard too soon, um, if at all. So I have found that gesso is my my go-to for chipboard okay and then again and I'm you can see I'm doing generous coats of of gesso and I would recommend doing both sides all right so see how that side's not let it completely dry and then do both sides I'm going to move that out of the way close that and I'm also going to, now, same thing with that, um, that palette paper. Since I just have like my base coat colors, I'm going to get my baby wipe and I'm just going to wipe it up because then I can use more of that palette. Okay, look how easy that cleaned up, right? Okay, now um, we're going to go back to that piece <clears throat> here, make sure it's dry. It's a little cool to the touch, and that's a good um, indicator that if it's cool to the touch, you need to, to dry it um, because it's it might be dry to the touch on top, but underneath that layer, it's still pretty wet, and that's when it's cool to the touch, so. <clears throat> okay, now while I want some of this um, texture from the background that we put that gesso on, while I want some of that to stay, I also kinda wanna knock it back a bit, and I like to use these um, sanding blocks for nails. I get them on Amazon. Okay. They are fantastic. And I typically will go with the grain, but this is MDF. So it's kind of all over the place. So I will just go back and forth and it makes it so smooth. In fact, I don't think I did the other side. Listen to that versus this. I mean, it's smooth to the touch, but I still can see that um, texture from the brush strokes. All right. So um, the kind used for cars, so I thought it may be. Sometimes if you add a little water to it too, it will um, to the sandpaper. But my recommendation would be, Patrick, too, is to kind of test it on something. Um, 
or have a blank piece of wood that you're like, eh, you know, I don't like whatever's on it or it's not that expensive. And you can kind of put down some paint and test it to see uh, what result you get versus doing a whole piece and messing it up. Okay. Um, bye, Linda. Have fun at church. Okay. Now the background, I um, did this really pretty yellow background. I can't wait to show you. And I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Light. If you don't have the media line, you can use Yellow Light. And let me say that um, this will be written step-by-step -step pictures um, for the entire design will be um, up on my website soon. Okay. So Hansa Yellow Light. And let's get out some Diary Lied Yellow. And it sounds much better if you go Diary Lied Yellow with a southern accent. Um, anyway, so we'll put some of that out. And then remember, do yourself a favor. Let your paint last longer. Get those little things off. All righty. And then I'm going to get another paper towel. I'm going to turn this one inside out. Just got paint on it. Hello. <laughs> Actually, let's just get another clean one. Alrighty. So I'm going to mist this with water. Now, because I use the multi-purpose sealer and I use the gesso, this MDF is pretty sealed. And then the layer on top with a little sanding, it's so smooth, nothing is going to penetrate that MDF board. All right. So I don't have a problem using water and misting it and getting it wet. And then I'm going to use a brush. Let's do that three quarter. No, let's do a 12. You'll have to use your Northern Ontario voice, Brenda. <laughs> yes, it, it makes it so fun. Anyway, so my brush is wet and I picked up some of that um, Hansa Yellow Light and I'm just going to kind of slip slap it here and there and share and show some really cool tricks that you can do, um, not just for this, but if you're creating and painting backgrounds. Okay. So now the reason I didn't cover everything is because I'm gonna spritz it with water again, and that's going to thin out that yellow, and I'll move it around. And just kind of let it drip here and there. And I was gonna do a piece and have it ready. This is the only surface I have. And speaking of this surface, let me pop it up here so that you guys, if you wanna paint the design that I'm gonna share and show in a lesson soon on this background, um, you can get it at cdwood.com, okay? It's that 10-inch um, William plaque. All righty, so let's get that off there. And then I am going to dry it just a little, just a touch. Hello, Joyce. Oh, you're so welcome, Patrick. That, that really is my biggest tip I can give you guys on anything. If you're wondering if something will work, guess what? Try it. Try it again, either in an art journal, on a scrap piece of wood, on a piece that you hate that you painted, paint over it, and use that as your testing board. I wonder if these two colors will go well together, you know, and put them together and see if you like it. That really is one of the ways I've taught myself so many things um, along my creative journey is just giving it a go seeing if it works. There have been some fails, more than successes, but at the same time, it's all about um, playing and learning and see where things um, work and where they don't. All right, so see, I can still see a little bit of white space, but it's got a skim of that yellow over it, and I love it, and it's not all dry. I just re-wet it a little bit, now I'm gonna come in with that same brush. Hello, Elizabeth, no problem. Whoa, I heard you in Southern Ontario. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and then I am gonna load up my brush with that Diary Lied Yellow. Again, it's got water in it. This is highly pigmented, but I don't want a real heavy color right yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap my brush here and there, but not everywhere. 
okay? So middle of the brush, middle of the brush. Don't come up here on the ferrule, doesn't work so well. Middle of the brush, middle of the brush, all right? Now, now I'm gonna dry this, try and get it a little bit more dry, um, a little bit more dry, a little drier, and I have enough paint for all of us to be doing this piece. It really is um, a paint that does not take much. Uh, it goes a long way, it's highly pigmented and beautiful. But I'm gonna show you, because right now this is too bright, I'm gonna show you how to tone it down. Okay. So. Absolutely, Joyce. Absolutely. So Joyce just said it's better to try and fail than to have never tried. Absolutely agree. I, I get really excited when I get a new product or um, e even an older product, like when the media line came out, I played around with it and tried different things. Um, I like to see what a product can do that, that isn't intended for that product or um, just hasn't been done yet. And you, you find those things out when you allow yourself to play, which is something I strongly urge my membership to to do and January was all about plain. Um, February was all about loose and impressionistic and this month we're doing big and bold. So Georgia O'Keeffe florals, the grapes that um, are hanging on my wall you might have seen in the beginning of the video and um, we're doing that in a Zoom class and just switching it up and playing and not doing the cookie cutter same thing all the time. Because I don't know about y'all, but I get very bored <laughs> with things like that when it's the same, same old, same old. Okay. I'm feeling like I need a little here, so I'm going to put it there because I want it there in the finished piece. Right there. All right. Let's dry that. That's a really good point, too. Um, that Robin said sometimes the MDF is different. Moving to TV so iPad can charge. <laughs> well, now I'll just be bigger than life, Kay, on your TV, right? So, love the cherry blossoms. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. Yeah, you can get some not so great. Um, quality MDF. Okay, so that's a little wet, but I'm just going to touch it with a paper towel. Okay, I'm going to let this kind of um, oop, wet there. I always do a um, touch test just to make sure. Okay, now it's dry. All right, so if you've done a background and you're like, oh, that is so in your face, so bright, and you want to tone it down, a great thing to do is a wash of gesso. Okay, and we're gonna do this a couple times. So I am gonna take it out with a palette knife. I don't need much. And come over with my, my big, um, ooh, you can absolutely use a stencil with the gesso. It's one of my favorite things to do. Linda, and that's what I did actually, <clears throat> on this one. This is the M23 stencil and it's raised um, up from that page because I ran gesso through it. So one of my favorite ways to use gesso. Okay, so I'm using that one inch flat wet and I'm gonna work it into that gesso. Make a nice inky consistency. Oh my goodness, guys, you'll have to go and watch some of my, um, look on YouTube. I do, I did use gesso on a background and um, also showed how to use stencils and gesso. Okay, wash, it's a wash, more water than product. All right, and we are going to tone down this yellow. Okay, and I'm going to let it sit for a second <clears throat> just to um, 
have it kind of tone that yellow down. And then we're gonna wipe it back. I'm just looking around here if I have a stencil. I do actually. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me use that one because I might show that with the gesso. Um, okay, now I'm gonna take a paper towel. I like to use Viva paper towels and let me tell you why. Um, I wish I had bought stock in them, but I don't like a paper towel that's rough on my fingers or my hands because if it's rough on my fingers, it's rough on my brushes and it's rough on my surface. So while this is a little bit more expensive, a shop towel or a Viva paper towel is really the best to use. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe back and forth. Exactly how I applied it is how I'm gonna wipe it off and wipe it back. I'm not necessarily wiping it off, okay? But look how that tones that down and just gives it a softness. So I do washes with gesso all the time, especially if I need to um, kind of subdue that color a little bit. But let's move that out of the way and get our stamps that we're using today. So this is the um, French Marketplace. I do have this on my website. Um, and guys, don't forget, when you use that discount code on my website, you'll get a discount, all capitals, um, and then hit apply, okay? So I'm going to use this um, cancellation stamp, stamp, and then also this, um, nope, not that one, this one. I like this that has the writing on it, so it is this one. Okay, so this one comes with four different stamps on it. Um, anyway, French Marketplace. And instead of using ink, I wanna use paint. So I'm gonna use a brayer, um, which I also have, this Tim Holtz. And let me show you a really cool trick if you're not familiar. You can take this out and wash it. Um, hand sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, or just as soon as you're done, throw it in your water basin. Um, bye, Patrick, thanks for being here. Okay, so put it back on. And then it has these little um, feet that you can let it rest and it's not touching your surface. All right, so I'm going to use uh, raw umber. You can use burnt umber, raw umber um, in Americana, or you can use the media line. All right, so I'm going to use that brayer and pull that down. Hopefully you can see that. And just make a little bit of a, um, a very thin runway. You have a couple of choices. You could stick the stamp right into it, or you can just use your brayer and brayer over it. And I'm not too concerned if it's perfect that you get every single image from the stamp. It's just going to add some interest to our background. Okay. So... Hello, Cheryl. And if this is your first time, guys, joining us, let me know. Um, happy that you guys are all here. We can't buy Viva paper towels. Oh, bummer. Well, shop towels will work great. Anything soft. This is a fantastic stamp set. So what I'm doing is I'm just brayering over the letters, the stamp. And I don't want to use all of it. I just want to use pieces and parts. So I'm going to stamp there. And I might come in here and stamp. All right. And then up here. Maybe a little over there. See, I haven't even reloaded yet. And you're going to get all this paint to come off. Now, let's reload it because I do feel like it's getting away from me there. I have a straight line there, which... Kind of aggravates me, but I'll fix it with my design. <laughs> um, okay, and let's put a little over here and maybe some there. So I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of pushing it in the middle and holding it up on the sides so that I don't get all of that. Okay, awesome. Now, your... Um, stamps. What I do with mine is I immediately, I have a little water bath over here and I'm going to stick it into the water bath, wash it off. Um, the dry erase, you know, the white erase, magic erasers, 
you can run over or a baby wipe. You wanna be careful sometimes with these uh, red rubber ones when you're using hand sanitizer and things, they will dry out. So it's always a good idea to um, you know, put that in water and go ahead and start you know, getting that paint off. So, but I'm gonna leave that one in my little water bath that I have here. Okay. And then let's make sure this is 100% dry before I put anything else on it. I love this stamp too. It is amazing. Oh, old t-shirts is a great idea, Donna. Oh, hello, Denise. Stamps in the background are amazing. Again, it's instant design without having to sit there and do all the lettering and everything, right? So remember, I kind of got a little cray cray there. Um, now I'm gonna use this canceled stamp. So we will load up some of that. And if you're unsure, go ahead and um, do it on a scrap piece of paper and that will help you uh, see if you've got enough paint on it, okay? Like I said, remember, you can just throw it right into the very thin, very, very, very thin, and that brayer does amazing at getting that very thin. All right, and then I wanna put a little bit of that there. I'm gonna do that there. And remember, I had a little boo-boo there. Just a couple of words. Okay. Do I need anything else? I kind of do. And I'm going to dry off this. I want something right here. Um, so I'm going to dry off that stamp. I hope it's not too wet, but we'll see. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. Although I don't like perfect, you know, I always say check perfection at the door. <laughs> um, it's overrated. Okay, now your brayer. Go ahead and throw it in the water as well. That little um, thing will come off and you can wash it. But you don't want to let the especially gesso or matte medium dry on it. Now I'm looking at my finished piece, which I have not shown you guys yet. So I have a f something here <laughs> and I have something here that is going to help cover up some of this open space. But even this with that brown on there, it's still, I wanna subdue it and tone it down. So pushing things back in your design is what mixed media is all about. So. Hello, Brenda. Oh, a nap sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, alrighty. So I'm going to go back to the gesso. Okay. And hello, Lynn. All right. So a little white um, gesso. And again, on your palette, mix it so it's a very inky consistency. More water than gesso. And watch how it's gonna to tone down that brown, okay? So right now it's just a, a little too much and I wanna subdue it, but not take it away. So I'm going to do a wash of that gesso. Right over it to tone it down. Okay, now look, you can still see that yellow in the background. You can still see the, the uh, stamped image. I am gonna come in with a paper towel, just like I did. I like to kind of wipe it back so that you can take some of that gesso away that's subduing it without bringing too much of that color back up. Okay, so that is my background for my piece that I designed that I'm gonna show you in a second. Easy peasy, ready to go, right? And the layers are there. Um, I'm gonna dry this real quick. Tease, I know, right? <laughs> oh 
goodness gracious. I am. I wanted to show you guys in the beginning and I thought, no, I want you to see where, what this piece, after I finished doing the background, um, it spoke to me. And so what I painted on it. Do you have any guesses? Anyone? I will tell you it has butterflies because I'm going to show you those next. Okay. Now, with that, if you wanted to bring anything up, like if you wanted to bring some of that diary light yellow up a little bit more, you could come in with a wet brush and that diary light yellow. Again, kind of tap it here and there, but not everywhere. And then what I like to do is let it just sit for a second. Not real long. Um, you know, just a, a couple of um, seconds. And then I'm going to lay a paper towel down and just lightly touch it to soften the look of the splatter. It's going to give it a stained look instead of a heavy look. Okay? And if you do that and you're like, oh, I really liked it more subdued, dry it. Put a wash of gesso over it. But I do love the difference. That almost looks orange doesn't it? So, when will the buddies be done? Oh, Linda, they're drawn out and they're just ready to be painted. So, hopefully soon. Uh, March is an extremely busy month for me. So, again, like I said, I'm hoping to have them done before Easter. Um, okay, let's go on to our chipboard pieces that I showed you. Um, and this, let me find one that I've already done. So, like this one, I recommend doing both sides because it might seep in if you've got water on your station, you know, it might make that break down a little. Um, I've, I've had pretty good luck with it not, but again, if you're unsure and you're worried, uh, gesso both sides and let it completely dry. And the other thing you can do after it's dry is, oh, Bonnie, 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 Bonnie. You are right. <laughs> so I'm going to take that sanding block and sand off. Just sanded the gesso off that one. Sand it lightly just to smooth it out. If your gesso is a little rough, you can just do a little light sanding. On the edges, if you get a little buildup like I have there, you can just do that edge. Okay, we'll move that one to the side. And then I'm going to zoom in. And I'll try and bring my palette over so I can show you guys when I'm painting. Alrighty. So before we draw on anything, I love, love, love this next technique I'm going to show you guys. Um, so again, it has been sealed. And I'm going to get it wet and put a little bit of one of my favorite colors, Thalo Blue. Um, vibrant. Hello, Sandy. Let's get that out of there. So it closes better, doesn't dry up. Wood flower market cart of flowers with butterfly. That would be super cute, Karen. That would be super, super cute. All right, so a little phthalo blue. And my little Mr. Water bottle. Okay. Yep, Denise, you're spot on. Um, I'm going to do it two different ways. So I'm going to move that little guy out of the way. This one, I wanted to give it a little bit of a stained glass, watercolor-ish look. So I'm going to spritz it and come in with a three-quarter inch angle. So I have my three-eighths uh, faux squirrel angle. I love, love, love having paint on my fingers. <laughs> um... So a little bit on the toe of that phthalo blue. Look how vibrant that color is, guys. It is so, so vibrant. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of stay on this side of the body and very loosely and lightly do a little bit of flow to color and just kind of walk that out just a little bit towards the edges. Okay, and then I'm going to take that, um, well, we'll do like a number 10 flat, get it wet, pick up some of the phthalo blue, 
So I've got water in that brush. You can see there on the palette how wet that is. And then I'm going to kind of um, splatter it and then mist it with a little water if I need to. So remember I was saying if, you, if you're if you using um, a lot of water with something that's cardboard, you run the risk of it um, breaking down. So that gesso is imperative. And I'm just going to kind of move that around. Take a paper towel and just kind of lightly touch it to get some of that moisture up. I'll go ahead and wipe that. And then I am gonna come back again with that number 10 flat with some of that phthalo blue. And splatter it again. Okay, I wanna take some of that away. I feel like it's too much solid there. Okay, and then again, just gonna wipe up my, my little spot here. Now the cool things about um, chipboard as well is you could cut it. If I just wanted to use like half the body and wings and then you can put those underneath to make it look like the butterfly is flying. Um, I do have a lesson coming up soon with that. Alrighty, so let's dry this. I still feel like that's too, too uh, solid because I'm looking at my original, so I wanna take a little bit of that away. So a little water, and I'm just gonna move some of that. There we go. So it's not so solid. All right, let's dry that. Again, kind of hold it down with something. Hello, Marilyn. Butterflies and daisies are beautiful, yes. I'll say it's not daisies, but it is a flower. Uh, Joyce, I cut the chipboard butterflies. You can find them on my website. There's a pack of 12, six big, six small. Okay, I'm just gonna let that. Alrighty, now let's go into um, Payne's Gray, which you won't have a lesson with me probably without a Payne's Gray <laughs> being used. So a little Payne's Gray, and we will, I'm just gonna use that 3 8 angle because I have it here, a little bit on the toe, and I'm gonna paint the body, the head and the body, dry that and then I'm also going to take that 3 8 angle let me dry this real quick and on the toe only so it has a little bit of water in it a little moisture I'm going to pick up some of that phthalo blue um, I have done Lily of the Valley um, Linda but um, a commission piece I did um, I don't think I have any lessons, but that would be a really pretty flower to do. Um, okay, so I'm going to float that color just between the wings. Kind of get a little placement. Okay, so see that? Just to separate those wings a little, and let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see that better. I love butterflies too. They are my, they're one of my favorites. Um, Karen, hint regarding the flowers. Look above in the comments, above your comment. <laughs> um, because Bonnie got it right. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take a small brush or a round. So this is like a number four round. Um, and get some Payne's Gray on it. And I'm going to go right along the edge of that surface. And then again, I'm just kind of rolling that brush, get a little bit of a, an edge. 
And I'm using Payne's Gray instead of black. You, you see how dark it is? I like how not harsh Payne's Gray is compared to a black. So, but if you don't have Payne's Gray, you could always use a black. Okay, again, a little bit of water. And I'm gonna bring that in a little bit darker to there. And then we'll come on this side. Go around, right to the wing, bring it into the body. So I have some beautiful pictures of when my mom um, lived in Germany and went to Holland, um, the country. And I have tons of pictures of beautiful flowers. And they were my, um, they were my reference for this piece. Now, a tip on that, if you're like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to, um, you didn't get my joke about that. <laughs> gotcha, Karen. Um, if you're afraid that that's going to mess it up, do yourself a favor and put a, a layer of matte medium on there. Matte medium will be a nice little barrier so that if you mess it up, you can always wipe it off. Okay, so I've got that outlined with black. And then... I'm going to um, take that same round brush and dry it off really, really well, really well, and get a little bit of, let's see, warm white, warm white. Hmm, where is me titanium white? All right, so, so titanium white. And take that, um, actually, I'm going to use a flat brush. So we'll go to... Um, I don't know. Let's just do any kind of flat brush. So this one is a number two flat. It's dry, has not been wet. I'm going to load it up with some white, work that into the brush, wipe it off, <laughs> wipe it off, and then right along that body, I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing. Okay, so a little bit more. Just do a little highlight of white on the body. And then if you want to do lines, now you could use a stamp. I'm working on some stamps, um, images that I have, my Tim Holtz uh, Flutter, and there's another one that has butterflies on it. But I'm working on a laser cut that will fit so you can just stamp right on it. But in the meantime, you can always use a pen. So um, these Thule art fine liner pens or an identi pen, uh, the Deli Mate. I got both of these on Amazon. Um, and you wanna use the fine tip. Now I'm one that I'm not real strict about, okay, it has to be exactly the same. Although I know butterfly wings are the same. I tend to just go right in and start drawing loops and then loops from there. Then you can draw. Okay, so get those loops on there. And then I try and do the same exact thing over here. But um, when the packet comes out, it'll have a pattern for what I did on the butterfly that's symmetrical. Right now, and I tend just to draw. And so on this one, I'm going to do a little. Just little loops. And then again, some inner loops. Okay. And then from there, um, little dots. So a stylus works great. Um, hello, Jackie. So a stylus works great just to pick up some white and I'm gonna do 
a dot right in the center of that top black wing part and then I typically will come back to that dot and do little dots below that. Okay, and we'll do one here. Okay, so I'm not gonna do both sides, but you get the gist that you can paint that chipboard to then go on your piece, it's lightweight, you can glue it, you can use um, pop dots. Um, I'm gonna show you what I did on mine at the end, okay? So this is the large one, and the small one I'm gonna paint slightly differently, um, and that's gonna be, well that one has something on it. Let's get another one, let's do this one, okay? Um, and I'm going to do the floating of the same color, if I can find my brush, there it is, um, my 3 8 angle, a little bit of that um, phthalo blue. Thank you, Denise. Uh, could you use a stencil and put gesso over it? Absolutely you could, absolutely. Um, in fact, I think a stencil on this chipboard would be beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit, of, again, of that phthalo blue, and saw, you saw how I kind of walked it out. So put it there, and then just slightly walk it out towards the edge of your wing, nice and soft. You can always come in with a mop, so I'll use that um, IPC medium soft top, soft flat top mop just to kind of get that, okay? Subtle. <laughs> um, and we'll dry this. Uh, Charlene, I don't use sealer on the journal pages, the multi-surface sealer, you certainly could. I use gesso or matte medium. Um, almost every single time. And there are several different ways that I do it. I do have a couple lessons on my YouTube channel um, from last spring when I opened my membership group up, I think where I showed how to use the gesso and the um, matte medium a little bit more. Okay, especially on your chipboard pieces. You wanna make sure that they're not hot. All right, let that kind of cool down. And then I am gonna come in with a little bit more of that phthalo blue and work that in just toward the um, center of that butterfly. Okay, but you see how loose I'm being with it. I'm kind of doing a little, um, like a little circle. Okay, and let's dry that. You can hold it where it's... Oh, that's awesome to hear, Michelle, that it's nice and pretty up in Baltimore, so you can open those windows up. Um, okay, same thing with the center. I'm going to do um, the center. Hello, the body. I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray. And do that body. And let's dry that. I can't wait to show you guys the finished one. I love it. Okay. And then back to that round brush um, or brush that can give you that edge. Nice and thin. Um, a rigger would work great as well. So on this one, I'm just going to go from there and down. And then here, I'm going to... Just kind of scoop that around. Just to get a little edge. Oop, got some water drop right there. Okay. And then same thing. Sometimes when I turn it, I get my line wrong. So I'm going to try and keep my hand out of the way, but 
not turn it. All right, so notice I didn't go all the way around the top. This one's gonna be slightly different. And then I'm going to dry that. Absolutely, Gilbert. And guess what we're, I'm gonna be doing soon? I'm gonna be doing some lessons with some alcohol inks. Oops. I've been hemming and hawing about having them on my website. Um, and I thought before I do that, I will do a little demo live. Um, the other thing is with some of these. Okay, so those are all coming up too. First in my membership group, both of these, and then I'll do a little something something with y'all. Okay, I think that's way dry. <laughs> um, let's go back to our angle brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that phthalo blue. Just want to, after we put that body in, I like to come back and make sure that I've got that right up against the body. Hello, Susan. How's the weather there in California? Oh, Jerry, I'm so happy that you're here. Thanks for being here. All righty. I wish I had a different, and I do, I have this stencil, and I'll do that, um, Linda. That was a great question. So let's finish this real quick. Make sure it's nice and dry. My, uh, my plexiglass thing on my tabletop just popped up from the heat. Um, okay, so it needs another layer of Payne's Gray in the center. And then the uh, line work. You can do, again, with the fine tip uh, pen, Sharpie marker, fine tip. You can do it with a brush if, you're, um, if you don't have a permanent black marker. But what I'm going to do is, again, take that um, permanent black marker and just start drawing these loops. Okay, and if you don't have a permanent black marker, you can always do this and use um, like a workable fixative spray or um, mat, uh, a matte spray so that it doesn't move when you go to paint over it. I'm trying to see if I did anything different on my original. Okay, so again, those loopy loops, and then we will do a, um, a little bit of a white dry brushed highlight right in the center. Oh, I'm gonna show you even a more iridescent, pretty look to this um, Virginia as well, and that is with the White Frost Metallic Luster. Okay, you can get this, um, I don't know if Michaels has it, I know Hobby Lobby does, and I just get mine at decoart.com. But if you take a wet brush, it becomes a iridescent shimmer liquid from a paste, okay? So I'm gonna put it there, and then you can brush that over the whole thing. I'll do one half and not the other, and then show you the, hopefully the shimmer metallic shine. Sometimes when it's wet, you can't really see it that much, but you do get this um, like little mica shimmery shine. That metallic luster is amazing. Okay, um, let's dry that. And you could do that before you did the edges with the black so that you didn't have to go over them again or with the Payne's Gray, I should say. 
Okay. Now to give this a little more depth, and of course on my finished piece, you'll see I did some antennas. Um, if you use a lot of water, let it dry um, just a little bit so it doesn't mildew. The other thing is if you've got a container like this that is rock hard, look up on YouTube how to reconstitute metallic luster. It works. I've done it many times. Um, and you use boiling water. Okay. Alrighty, so let's give this just a little bit more depth. Um, and I'm gonna use that angle brush, it's damp. I have a little bit of Payne's Gray on the toe only. And I'm going to, again, float that where I floated the um, phthalo blue, right along that body, and then underneath where the top wing meets the bottom wing. Okay, so you just get a little bit more depth to that butterfly. All right, hello. Let's dry it, and I'm gonna show you a couple things, and then my finished piece. Okay. All right, let's move that out of the way, because Linda Safranco had a really good uh, question, and so like on this butterfly, you could put, and I just grabbed this stencil, it's a new one I got from um, CD wood they sent me but it's kind of like that crackle um, which would look really cool on dragonfly wings but since I have it here let's just do it let's do it and then palette knife gesso although I really you know what I want I want to get let me see if I have it hang tough right there I want to use my favorite, <laughs> my favorite stencil, um, and that is my Tim Holtz Flourish. You can see how much I love it and use it. All right, let's move that out of the way. All righty. So I'm going to use this one instead just to show you the... Um, that squirrely, swirly look that to me goes a little bit more with the butterfly. And then you want to load that palette knife up, not with a bunch of product, and then do a little side scrape swipe with that um, gesso. Okay, so a little bit. And I put it on my palette. Let me show you here. I put it on my palette and I work it into the bottom of that knife. And then I want to hold this in place so I don't move it. But um, you know, not a whole bunch because I don't want it to seep underneath. Although if it does, it's okay. And then we'll lift that up. Hello. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. When you use gesso with a stencil or matte medium, you want to make sure that you wash it off. All right. Um, it will stay on there and it's a little bit harder to get off um get a baby wipe and i typically will throw them again into a little water bath and get those off hand sanitizer works great to dry it uh, excuse me to wash it um, and then i use soap and water give it a nice little rinse dry it off and it's ready to go all right so let's dry that Put a little color to it so you can see the gesso. Um. <laughs> Me too, Tara, and my brain has been in overdrive. Like I said, I wasn't gonna paint the background that I shared with you guys earlier today, but it, it spoke to me and so I ran with it and I love it and I can't wait to um, bring the lesson to you guys. All right, so. All right, so we will dry this. You want to make sure that it's completely dry because if you go to add color to it, that gesso is just going to move and lose its texture and dimension. Um, oftentimes when I'm working on my workstation too, I will put it up on something. So, you know, like something like that or a little smaller. Sometimes those um, sanding blocks work great. Bit. 
instead of. Make sure it's nice and dry. The thing with this too, guys, you could, you could punch holes in that, put resin over the whole thing after you've painted it, put little jump rings, um, necklace, a tag, so many different things that you could do with this. Alrighty. So let's let this kind of settle down just a minute. Now I'm going to get out some quinacridone magenta just because I have it sitting there. And we'll use some of that phthalo blue. Okay. <laughs> um, I've never, never had that happen. My plexiglass just popping up from the heat. Okay, so that gesso is dry. And I'm just going to do a wash of color right over it. Of that phthalo blue. And look at that. Oh, that dimension from that. Um, gesso that's on the wing. It's going to do it on everything. Okay. And then I'm going to um, take that same brush. I rinsed it out, pick up a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Oh, I love hearing that, Carol. I love mixed media. Um, it's all about the layers and knowing how to push them back, bring them forward. So a little bit of that quinacridone magenta, and then we will, a little bit up there. I'm gonna stick it on this jar lid. Again, your heat tool, you wanna make sure that you're moving it around constantly, not staying in one area. You can make gesso bubble, actually, by drying it too close, and sometimes you get some really cool effects, and um, and I do it often. But look how cool that is, having that gessoed dimension. Nice fingernail, right? <laughs> um, and then that color hitting it. But I'm going to show you something else that's really cool. Okay, let's let this dry. You can come in with that sanding block, and hit it just a little and it will go down to the gesso and take some of that color away. So if you're like, oh, I want a little bit more of that design showing through. See how you can bring that back just by sanding it a little bit and then going right in with your other colors. Um, Triple thick is a fantastic faux glass look, um, Suzanne. Great point, yes. Okay, and then again, come in with your a little bit of shading to separate that body from the wings. But look how cute that, I mean, super cute with that dimension. Um, from that gesso, right? So many things you could do with that. Endless, endless possibilities. Okay, let's backtrack real quick. So there's my background um, that I shared and showed how to do. And again, not exactly sure when I'm going to do the design because the next two Sundays, I am out of commission. Um, my son's birthday is next week and we're taking him to um, brunch. And then the weekend after is the Cherry Blossom Festival, and my sister-in-law is gonna be in town, and we're going to the Cherry Blossom Festival for the first time in Macon, Georgia. We've lived here for uh, many years, <laughs> 2005, and we've never been. Okay, so this is the, the background that I did, and the butterflies that I shared and showed you guys, and this is what I ended up painting, okay? Can I hear the oohs and the ahs? <laughs> um, again, when my mom went to Holland, she um, took the most beautiful pictures of tulips. And I was looking through those. These are so simple and easy to paint. They're pretty transparent. You can see some of the background, um, especially through those leaves. And then the butterflies, what I love is I added it to this piece using um, pop dots. So 
Um, I get these from the Dollar Tree, and you can cut them down. You can also get them at, you know, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whatever, in the um, scrapbook section, craft section, um, and cut them down to size. But what I liked about those, instead of just putting them flat, is, again, you could bend them to have them be dimensional on your piece. How fun is that? You can see how they're attached. And then what I did is I laid them flat first and I put the antennas um, and then added a little shadow. But this is going to be a live lesson soon. Not exactly sure, like I said, when, um, but I am looking forward to doing that with you guys, um, hopefully soon. So thank you guys. I love this piece. It really just kind of flew out of my brush and I love it when that happens, <laughs> I have to say, because it doesn't happen often. Let me come back up here. My hair is kind of semi sort of still there. Um, but anyway, I love the colors on here too. And I thought at first maybe the blue butterflies were a little in your face, but you know, blue and orange are great complementary colors. And I loved that subtle background. Um, and again, the transparency of the leaves. I will tell you, I used a lot of the media line, um, again, because I love the vibrancy and the transparency of those paints. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you about this. I don't think so. <laughs> um, you're so welcome, guys. Thank you. Yes, I love this stencil. Like I said, that is my, this is my go-to. In fact, I have to put it away because I will use it on everything. I just absolutely love it. Um, and I don't know if I have, no, I don't have one in here, but I have something similar um, that I lasered on my Glowforge on one of the carrots, super cute. So anyway, all right guys, I hope that you had fun. I hope that I taught you some things that maybe you didn't know or um, that you're excited to learn more about. So that is our mixed media. Can you show the stamp set again? Yes, Sue, I will. Thank you. It is the, let me see where it's at. <laughs> um, here it is. It is the French Marketplace. Um, and I do have this again on my website. Um, and, um, Again, I just think it has so many cool elements to put into a background um, on a piece. And then those butterflies. Do, don't the, doesn't the big one kind of look like a stained glass or, I don't know, I just, I love the look. Okay. All right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let me see if I have anything on here. Um, I don't, on my website, I posted pictures um, of seminars that I'm doing, um, that I have coming up that I'm traveling to. So make sure to go to my website again. It is somewhere on here, right there. I did get new glasses, but they're not working. Um, you can go to my website and then go to seminars. Um, I'm teaching in Murfreesboro, Tennessee next month. I will be in um, Newport News, Virginia. I will be in Colorado, Denver area. Um, I will be online with uh, BADFA, which is um, in the UK, and a couple of other online things. But anyway, you can find out what I have coming up and all my information there. And then also while you're there, if you have not, when you go to my website, a little pop box will come down. If you put your email address in there, I don't farm email addresses, I don't share, I don't sell. Um, but if you put your email address in there, um, every month, at least once a month, um, you'll get a newsletter um, just kind of giving you some information. I did a free printable in the one I just sent out um, last week. And um, it's a good way to keep in touch with what I have coming up, what I have going on. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, all right, guys, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you being here. Miss this. Hope there's a replay. There is, Linda. You can wait till this ends and then hit the replay button. Or you can go to YouTube, and as soon as it's done, you can watch it right away. Um, all right. And I, um, again, not exactly sure when I'm going to be doing this lesson. I just saw a question, and I want to answer that. Lynn, yes, I do seal it. Soft touch varnish. 
my favorite go-to because they don't have it in the media line anymore, um, but they have it in the DuraClear. I love the way it feels. I love the way it, um, it just has a really nice, not satin, but soft look to it. I use this on everything. My art journal pages, my wood, um, on that chipboard, you can seal all of it with that, okay? And you can get that. Um, a lot of times they have it at Hobby Lobby or your local craft store, um, but you can also find it at decoart.com. Okay. All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful creative week. Make sure to get those brushes out, get that paint out, do something creative. I hope I didn't forget anything. Make sure to like, comment, share to be entered into the drawing for those amazing giveaways that I shared in the beginning of the lesson. Um, and y'all have a good one. Talk to y'all later. Bye.